Hey folks, so what we're going to be talking about today is um, release management for your application or your project. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do release management and you know that conversation filters into branching strategies and it filters into how you have your project structured, how you have your CI pipeline structured. Um, sometimes that filters into how you do deployments, right? So what environments you're deploying to, what tools you're deploying to, those sorts of things. Today, we're gonna to be kind of talking about a generic um, release pipeline process. And the goal of today is to kind of look at how that release process works and then take that release process and apply it to how you do things today. Um, Taking, taking things and lessons learned from it and seeing how you can apply those to the way that you do things today. Um, and so for that, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, the process. So let's go ahead with a little slide deck intro here that I've got. Um, if you see here, this is, uh, you know, this is a basic example um, of, a, of a normal pipeline, right? You have your build stage, you have your test stage, you've got your package stage, right? On every release, you're building your application, you're testing your application, and then you're packaging it. In a lot of cases, you're packaging it in a container. For the processes of this video and this pipeline, these three jobs are only, uh, only going to fire on branches that don't start with, the, with V and follow a, a V versioned syntax, like V star dot star dot star, right? Uh, it's also never gonna run on tag commit. So if you make a git tag like these, these three stages and all of the jobs they're in are never going to run on a git tag commit. That's that's by design, right? We I designed it purposely for this. And then if you if I can move my slide deck here. All right. So and then um, if you look at the, these stages, right? These stages are going to run on branches with the v name name pattern so any branch that has v star dot star dot star these three or these four stages are going to run when a commit happens to that branch it's never going to happen on a tagged commit it's only going to happen on a branch that starts with a v and follows the numeric syntax like a version and then we have a deployment pipeline process um, and this deployment pipeline uh, it, it only runs on tag commits. So these three stages will only run on a tag commit. The other thing they'll do is if you have a, if you trigger a pipeline with a force underscore deploy equals true variable, then these three jobs will fire for, for a deployment. So those are the three types of pipelines that we're going to be looking at today. And we're gonna be talking about how they trigger at different times and the automation therein. So let's go over to my repo. Um, so I've got this release pipeline example repo. And inside this repo, it's a normal Node.js application. The application gets built, it gets dockerized, and then it gets um, stored and pushed out. So if I go and I make a commit to this, right? Just any, any old commit on a main branch, right? So let's go and change the readme file here um, again, this is just a basic Node.js template from GitLab. If I go and I delete half the data in here and I make just a basic commit and I commit to the main branch and we fire it off. The pipeline that results from that is gonna be the first pipeline I showed you. It's gonna build it, it's gonna test it, and it's gonna package it. And it's gonna package it based on, based on the master or the main branch name, right? Th this should be main, but um, it's gonna, package it based on the branch name, right? And it's gonna go through this pipeline process. It's gonna build it, it's gonna test it, it's gonna do the security test, and then it's gonna build the container. And then the container is eventually going to end up over here in the container in the container registry, which is what we want. We want it to be built and then stored in the container registry. Perfect. Um, this is gonna be useful for things like merge requests. So like if you make a merge request, this is the type of pipeline that you're gonna see. It's gonna build it, it's gonna test it, it's gonna package it. Um, if you do anything else with it, like uh, any other commits in the branches, whatever have you, it's going to build, it's going to test, and it's going to package it for, for testing purposes, for your usage to make sure that everything works. But one of the things that you want to make sure that you do is 
you want to make sure that when you're releasing something that the item that you release is the item that you built and test during that release cycle. So this is just a small, a small feedback loop to build it, test it, package it just for testing purposes, just for, you know, figuring things out, making sure that it passed security scans, etc. right? That's what this is for. Now let's say that we've sat back and we've said, Hey, we're going to build a release. We're going to affect a release today, right? We've determined that the items inside the master branch are solid. All the merge requests are approved. You know, we've, we've hit the end of our sprint cycle, whatever have you. In that case, what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to create a new branch. Now, any branch you make, right? If it doesn't follow that V structure, it's going to have that pipeline that I showed you. So you can make a dev, a test, a staging, whatever have you. It's not going to have, it's not going to have that release pipeline. If you look at branch name here and we got V102, right? So I'm adding and following that, that naming convention and I create that branch. What's going to happen is a new pipeline is going to be created. And you're going to see this new pipeline here. And this pipeline is going to have that package release job. Now there's something unique that happens here. Okay. You don't just want anybody in your organization able to affect a release. You just don't want that to happen. Um, the releases should be something that's controlled. You want to be able to control a release and be able to say, Hey, you know, this release has met the quality necessary to affect a release. And that's why on this branch, we build the application, we test the application, we package it. All of our testing and compliance and everything happens in this test stage before we even get further along. Assuming everything in this pipeline run succeeds and works properly, we will be given the opportunity to package a release. But not anybody can package a release. And the reason why that is, is because this job we have tied to an environment. So if I look here at deployments and environment, we've tied to a, a release environment. And this, this will go back into available in a moment, but we've tied it to this release environment. And so when that job fires, it's going to look at this release environment and it's going to also note um, whether that environment was protected. So I've also protected that release environment and said that I'm the only person allowed to deploy. So that means that whoever tries to follow a release, if they try, try to follow a release with that pipeline and try to execute a release with that pipeline, it will fail unless that person is me. I've also set that job up, this, this package release job. I've also set that package release job up to be manual. So what that means now is that it's also not going to automatically release anything. It's only going to wait until I actually approve the release and hit package release to actually release it. And when that happens, um, that re release process is going to be uh, basically identified in GitLab in two separate areas. So the first area that that's going to be um, identified is it's going to be identified in the environment section. In the environment section, if you look at the releases, anytime that that job has fired, you're going to keep an entire list of how that job was fired. Um, the commit, the person who did it, when it was created, when it was deployed, the individual Git hash of that commit that happened whether that job was a successful release or whether it was a failure of a release. And you're going to have a historical record of every time that that happens, every time that release happens. That's the first spot. The second spot is actually going to be in releases, which we can't see yet because that job hasn't fired off. Let's see how long some grip SAS is going to take. Let's take a look and see how if this is almost done. That's still running. So we'll go ahead and pause for a moment and then uh, we'll go ahead and come back when this is done. A few moments later. All right, perfect. So uh, some grep SAS passed and the build container passed. So we have a container and then the package release job fired up right here. And you can see that it's a manual job. Um, if you're not me, you don't get this play button, but because I'm me, I get this play button. When I hit that play button, what this job's going to do is it's going to go out and it's going to gather all the information and evidence for this release and it's going to put it all together and it's going to fire an API call off to GitLab to actually affect a release inside GitLab. And it's going to do that by making a Git tag, tagging the commit that this job 
was built on with this version number. And then, then the other thing it's going to do is it's going to fill out the release information. So the container that was built right here, the information therein was passed to this release via variables. And if we look at deployments and we look at releases, you can see here that there is now a version 102 here. Because of that um, branch name, it took that branch name as the version, and now we have an, a, release, a release with this. We can download the source code for this release, or we can also look at the container for this release because it's listed here in the releases. If you have a deployment process, right, that kicks off after that release, um, that deployment process can read this container variable from the releases and it can turn around and deploy that container to your environments. And so what we've done is the deploy jobs in the pipeline, we've configured them to be ran on a tag. So when the release happens, this pipeline gets kicked off and this pipeline will automatically deploy that artifact to the development server. And then it will manually wait for us to promote it to staging and promote it to prod. Now you can configure this however you want. You can configure it with, you know, blue, green. Um, you can configure it with um, automatic, you know, automatic deployments and rollbacks. You can configure it with canary deployments. However you wanted to configure it, you can configure it. But the beauty here is, is that this only happens when a release is done and a, and a tag has been committed. And then this, these jobs take the information from that release to deploy it. And so as you're kind of going, it's meant to augment your normal development flow. You know, you, you make a branch, you make a merge request, you merge your merge request into, into your main branch. When you're ready to release something, you know, you, you make a versioned um, branch and then the pipeline kicks off, it starts, it sets up the release, and then you go and you go into your deployments. Now, you don't want to do that every single time, obviously, right? So one of the things that you can do is if you go to um, if you go to a pipelines and you run a pipeline and you say I want to run it for version one zero two and then in a variable you use force deploy is true this will cause that pipeline to run and deploy your application as you can see here and everything is involved there. So if you have to immediately or emergency, you know, do a deploy, you can simply run a pipeline against that version branch with force deploys true, and it will go ahead and it will run through the entire life cycle with you. But otherwise that life cycle is mostly automated. And then um, if you're a project manager or if you're a lead developer of the project, you can also come into this release and you can manually modify it you can add milestones, you can add more information, you can add more release assets, you can add more links. Part of this can also be automated through the through that that individual pipeline job. And you know, maybe a further improvement is is that there's a release.txt file inside of your repo and it fills all this information out from that release.txt file or that release.json file. And that's basically a good way on how to automate um, your release and your deployment processes. Now, this is just one of many ways. This may not be the right way for you, but hopefully you can take some lessons learned from this and kind of um, use it in your own processes. If you're curious about how we do this in the GitLab CI file, I'll give you a brief tour here. We obviously include all the security um, templates, maybe not all of them, but at least the three. We define our stages. Um, I've defined caching for Node.js and I've defined a um, uh, a blank job here to use so it it's repeatable. Um, so these rules, right? The if commit tag, don't ever run the job, but run it always otherwise. That build applications, test applications, and build container all inherit these rules. And then, you know, you install your application, you run your, your NPM tests. We're building the container with Kuniko so we don't have to do Docker and Docker. And then we also have the package release um, and the package release, uh, it's in the release stage. It uses the GitLab release CLI and it uses the re release CLI tool here. We're defining the environment as having a release name so we can take advantage of that, um, of that access control and gating and the, the, the historical record with the environment. We're overriding the rules here so that it only fires if there's a commit branch with a specific regular expression. 
Otherwise, it never fires. And then we've created a template deploy job here that kind of echoes out the, the deploys. We're not actually deploying to anything at the moment, but if you were, obviously this script line would be different. But the rules is where the, the magic is. With the rules, we've defined it if a commit tag and if force deploy is true. For the deploy to dev, we wanted to make that automatic. You can make that manual by simply removing this rule block here. But we wanted to make that automatic so you could immediately go to dev and immediately see your changes. So here we have the CI commit tag when always, and we've got the force deploy is true. Up here, it's manual. Down here, it's always. So um, yeah, I hope that helped folks. Uh, there'll be uh, probably a link somewhere for the, um, for the example repository and take a look at it yourself and let me know what you think. Thanks.